And this is Singa as she's getting a little bit better with the brushes. And uh, this is the short brush. And a lot of times what we'll do is scrub the sensitive areas briefly and then go ahead and move up towards the top of her body. This way you can build in the duration. You can see that she's kicking a little bit at the brush, but not aggressively. It's very slow. Mostly her belly and her legs seem to be the areas that get the most reaction. So you only stay there for a moment. And as she gets better, we'll be able to spend longer periods of time scrubbing on her belly and legs. And this is the first time that Singa was actually scrubbed with soap. She did very well. She left the trainer twice, but she comes back right away, as you'll see watching this. Um, we do allow for a certain amount of freedom of movement. The calves don't have to be perfectly still. And as long as they're not displaying aggressive behavior, we allow them a little bit of movement. As long as they maintain the lean-in position and are calm. When Singa is a little bit apprehensive, she will twiddle her trunk a little bit, but she's uh, that's just a small amount of apprehension that she shows when she's doing something new, um, such as blood draws or this scrubbing with something new to her. This was the second day that Singa had learned to do the rear end presentation, and she now holds like a rock when you're doing this behavior and will allow for inspections of her rear end. Other husbandry procedures that don't require as many training steps are oiling the eyes, mouth and tooth inspections, and rear end presentation. The most difficult training situation we've been faced with in the husbandry category is the blood draw. Getting blood from these female calves is essential as they may begin cycling at a young age. When training for this procedure, trainers try to imitate an actual blood draw as closely as possible. It has been our experience that even the smallest changes, such as using a sterile scrub when a real blood draw is occurring, can clue the elephants in and make them more apprehensive. This is Singa here going through the blood draw desensitization. Kimba has been taken through the blood draw training once before, but had only experienced blunt needle desensitization before the actual blood draw. This turned out to be too big of a leap, and Kimba's training regressed severely. Recently, training began anew with Kimba, and Singus has also begun. The steps have been reevaluated, and the intermediary TB needle or insulin needle was introduced. Both Singa and Kimba have allowed insertion of the TB needle, and in fact, have now both been TB tested. If all goes as planned, blood collection should be in the near future. This is a behavior that should not be rushed, or as in Kimba's case, you stand to lose a lot of ground. And actually, since this tape was made, both calves have progressed very well on their blood draw. Uh, procedure. They both allow insertion of the blood draw needle and hold. The only thing keeping us from getting blood at this point is the weather. Um, it's been a little bit cool here in Houston, not cold, but a little bit cool, and um, we haven't been able to get a good vein on these females, and the heating pad hasn't helped too much. We don't have any hot water facilities nearby. Kimba's a little bit more apprehensive during this training session. She'll reach back nervously with her trunk, but not aggressively. But since this tape has been made, she's doing a lot better. Um, you might notice that she'll pull her ear back occasionally. When they do that, we still tap on her ear and ask for her to present it again. We never pull it out. We never force her to present her ear. This has to be something that she does willingly. And as I said, both of the calves are doing great. And we have a list of the steps that we've used in our blood draw desensitization. And they may provide uh, some use to other people who have gone through this and have had to struggle with it like we did for quite a long time. But we have found that so far that this series of steps works very well. It's just a long, slow process. It's something that can take weeks and weeks. It depends on the animal and how confident they are but it's certainly better to take it slower than to have an animal that's apprehensive of the procedure. The first step is to train the ear presentation. The second is two-person desensitization. Third, tech touches the back of ear. Tech touches, pinches on veins. Medical scrub is used. Press hard on ear with blunt needle.
poke and hold with small gauge needle and poke and hold with a larger needle and work up to the blood draw. And as I said, these are steps that are taken very slowly over a, a period of weeks. The only punishment used in this program are timeouts. Usually, timeouts have proven very effective. Because Singa and perhaps Kimba have never received any physical discipline or discomfort paired with the word no, it is unlikely this reprimand has any real meaning for them. The tone of voice may capture their attention, but they don't respond to it in the same manner as our adults. One option may be to use the reprimand no immediately before a timeout when unacceptable behavior is displayed. Paired with a timeout punishment, it may become a more effective reprimand. <coughs> Capturing certain behaviors is a painless way to achieve desired results. While it would have been interesting to see if training an elephant to lie down using target poles was possible, it was much simpler to capture this behavior. Confusion and frustration were avoided completely by, by bridging and rewarding each calf when the trainer found them lying on their side. A verbal and visual signal were assigned immediately and paired with the behavior and reward. This is actually our young bull Kiba, who also learned to lie down in the same manner. Both Singa and Kimba learned this behavior quickly and would lie down on either side on command after three sessions of being rewarded for doing it on their own. Their ability to quickly grasp what is desired of them is a source of constant amazement to trainers. Very little shaping is involved in training their behaviors. Oftentimes, Singa will seek attention by offering new behaviors during a lull in a training session or simply while displaying a playful outburst. In this way, her vocalization, nod, and knee crawl were, were captured. She offers up more than we have time on which to focus. While she's learned many behaviors, her potential is far greater than what has been realized. In this segment, I was asking her to stretch for the first time from a distance, and instead, this is what I got. And this was simply too goofy, so I had to catch it. And this was another interesting response I got from her this day. She learned the, the crawl in one session. This is the raspberry vocalization, the captured behavior. Obviously, elephants are incredibly intelligent animals, and an effort must be made to meet their psychological needs by alleviating boredom. Positive interaction with keepers combined with the problem-solving task of learning a new behavior is an excellent way to mentally stimulate elephants. Kimba and Singa's upbringing was different in many ways, one of which was the amount of mental stimulation they received. During Kimba's early years, she was in a small, sterile, concrete yard, and interaction with her and Mitai was at a minimum. She did not receive much individualized training until she was almost two years old. On the other hand, Singa had a very active, exciting environment from the time she was born with her journey up the hill. While she did not receive any individual training for several months during construction, she was in a larger exhibit with five other elephants, and the surrounding construction ensured that there was never a dull moment. Along with other factors in Kimba's past, one has to wonder if the lack of stimulation at such a young age affected her in some way as well. Next, we have some of their enrichment behaviors put to music.
sir. Could show how you're uh, working on it. Singa is a very eager pupil and will sometimes dance excitedly in front of her trainer, shuffling from one foot to another like a child's potty dance, just waiting for a command. She especially enjoys the challenge of learning something new. It is not always as rewarding an experience for the trainer because she learns so quickly that it's admittedly not much of a challenge. The most difficult part may be thinking of new things to work on. The sky is the limit, and Singa is currently progressing well on a sit-up. Here Karen is using the cables as a spotter for Singa until she can build up some muscle tone. She's got a lot of building up to do. She also can have Singa get out from the cables a little way and sit up with one foot up, and that helps to, to work on her balance. Aside from teaching fun behavior, such as playing the harmonica, tambourine, catching sticks, drawing, Ooh, sitting up, good. trainers may offer a challenge by asking for an established behavior to be performed in an unusual position. We may have them lean in and salute, or to be performed at a distance, we can have them back up to the middle of the yard, salute, lay down, crawl on their belly, etc. These variations keep any one behavior or session from becoming too routine. Several factors have contributed to the successful training of these calves. The exhibit offers both a highly protected or an open cabled area for training. The calves have learned most of their behaviors in the open cabled yard. The training method in general has remained consistent once the program converted to protected contact management. Positive reinforcement is the only training method used aside from the timeouts used as the punishment. There's also been a strong commitment by the elephant staff to ensure Kimba and Singa are well trained. These elements, along with two intelligent, eager to learn calves, have produced positive results. The progress of these calves is a dramatic testimony to the possibilities of protected contact training that have yet to be explored.